Um, and also it's becoming increasingly recognised in the employment market. So if you're teaching um, undergraduates, are something that they will want to be able to put on their CV. Um, because, yeah, it's increasingly asked for by companies. But for spatial data, if you were asking this question five years ago, you would probably say, yeah, why would you use our spatial data? And this is something where, that's very rapidly moving. So the spatial functionality of R is increasing very rapidly. Um, and it's now at a stage where it can compete with conventional GIS software. It just does it in a slightly different way. It's not going to compete with things like ArcGIS for dynamic mapping and planning. Um, but for doing your kind of real hard number crunching, it's already there. And also, you don't have to make this decision, am I going to use R or am I going to use a more traditional GIS? The two can be compatible. So ArcGIS has a very good plugin to R, so you can call R commands from ArcGIS. So even if you keep using Arc, ArcGIS, assuming you're an ArcGIS user already, this will be useful. And the same applies to QGIS, which is an open source version. Um, and you do have a lot of advantages of using the command line over the GUI. So this quote, I think almost as important as the quote itself is who's saying it. So Gary Sh Sherman is a um, core developer of the popular GIS package uh, QGIS, which is a u has a graphical user interface. But even he's saying, with the advent of modern GIS software, there's a bit of a danger that people just want to click their way through life. That's good, but there's a tremendous of um, amount of power and flexibility waiting for you with the command line. So really do persevere with it, and I'd like to emphasise that you learn by doing is, is the way forward. So that, that's why this workshop has got a very kind of practical, practical feel to it. Um, yeah, visualisation. So I had a reputation for creating um, graphics that looked good, but like useful, but a bit kind of bare and rudimentary. But these have kind of evolved over time. And ggplot2, which, which is an R package, has really revolutionised visualisation in R, and it's caused quite a bit of a stir. So, in terms of spatial data, there's, there are kind of two camps where some people really advocate using the base graphics, um, whereas some people prefer ggplot2. Um, we're going to be quite agnostic in this, um, in this course um, and show you both ways of doing it. Personally, I think ggplot2 graphics are more beautiful, um, but you can get a lot of information through the base graphics. And just a kind of little plug, this is a, this is a book by some of the developers of um, our spatial capabilities, and these guys actually prefer our, uh, the base graphics approach. But as I say, we'll see both, you don't have to decide early on which one you prefer. Um, and then, yeah, just about why I've got this focus on visualisation. If you can't visualise the data, it's very difficult to communicate it. So I've just got a quote up there that kind of emphasises that. And I think it's a really good foundation for further analysis of really understanding what's going on. Um, so that's the reason for the focus on visualisation. So this is a base graphic. This is a fairly typical uh, base graphic in R. You can make them look more fancy. But you can see it's fairly kind of stripped down. You have the little legend at the top. You can move that anywhere. Um, and it's a basic uh, choropleth map. Um, the ggplot2 way of doing it, with the very same data, it has slightly more sensible defaults. Um, you've got this grey background, which you don't usually need, you can remove that quite easily. Um, but then the legends are really nice in there, you can have like a continuous variable as a legend. Sorry, it's not very clear at the back, but um, that's just the two different kind of ways of doing things. Um, and then the final set of slides I'm going to show is just R in the wild, so R being used for practical applications. So the first one um, is developed by a guy called Alex Singleton, and he used R, R's kind of programming capabilities to do a big loop through all of the sensors data sets, all of the sensors variables, and create maps for every single local authority of every single one of the census data sets. And that's actually been really useful to a lot of people. And he's gone on to apply the same method to Japanese data and come up with like a huge 
volume of PDFs if you printed it out for each local authority. So the, autom the automation aspect of it is really useful. So that's one. Um, number two actually comes from another tutorial on Advanced R that James Cheshire and I have created. This is actually a map of historical shipping routes that have been digitised from um, the late 1700s. Um, and what's even more amazing about this is, you know, it's, we've tried to make it aesthetically pleasing um, in a way that doesn't look like our graphics. But this is actually also a um, animation, so we animated this to show how it evolved over time, and that's again a good example of something that's quite difficult to do with more traditional GIS. Um, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna, I, I know my own research well, so the next two examples are from my own research. It's actually from my thesis, so I wanted to make the core results of my thesis reproducible so anyone could take the input data and see how I got to the end result, which is just happens to be the energy cost of commuting. And what I've done is I've put this up on online on this RPUBS thing, so you can publish a lot of your uh, research through RPUBS, you can't really see it there. But, um, so I've, I've made the argument that it's really useful, people can actually re reproduce this, um, this plot with the data that I've given them. And finally, for infographics, there's a lot of talk about infographics at the moment in newspapers, people talking about, you know, data is beautiful and you can take a lot of data and create um, a graphic that kind of just boils it down to one simple plot and this is something that I used, I made in ggplot2 and it just kind of highlights the flexibility that you've got there if you understand what's going on um, with um, if you understand what's going on with the ggplot2 syntax which is really very satisfying when you get used to it. So are there any questions after that introduction, are there any areas that you'd like to hear a bit more on before we get started? Okay, great. Well, so the course materials are all available online, so it's probably a good idea to uh, start downloading them. So I'm going to do that now from in the computer, so you'll see uh, what you do. And the, the main PDF document, um, it's been updated slightly since it was printed out, but just focus on the, the printed version. But this is going to be an ongoing project, so we're going to try and keep improving it into the future. Um, and also, I'm going to be running a, another R course that's slightly more advanced on an introduction to spatial microsimulation using R, which is a really good example of where you do some um, hardcore statistical analysis and then output the results into spatial data. And that's going to take place in May. Um, so I suggest we move towards the kind of live demonstration part of this. So. The first stage, really, um, is to get into an R environment. So 